You have entered the Chronix rabbit hole, and John Doe, thank you so much for your YouTube membership request. You are bringing us down Taria and Tuomas' interview for the Century Child Tour back in 2002. Thank you so much, John. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really excited to have our first Taria and Tuamas interview coming down the rabbit hole. It's crazy to think that this interview happened 21 years ago. Oh, wow. And we know a lot of the information and a lot of what has happened and the tea that was spilt since this interview. So it'll be really exciting for me to see how they interact with each other from 21 years ago before everything kind of blew up yeah no <laughs> kidding. Way good way, good way to, to say it. that yeah um if you guys are excited for this remember to like comment and subscribe for more enter the chronicness and let us know in the comments below what your favorite interview from the nightwish era be it from the very beginning to where we are now and i've definitely wanted to see taria and tuamas talk together mm. with nightwish as the topic so super excited for this thank you for giving this request and uh, hitting what we needed here. Century Child is your fourth album in this constellation. So what's different for you this time? Oh my They're God. Really young. Oh my God. Oh, wow. He's got red hair. He does. I like, I like <laughs> his, his look. Red hair era. He, 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 I wanted him to be my friend. <laughs> in this constellation. So what's different for you this time? I think the major difference lies in the vocal performances, especially the use of Tarja's voice on this album is more soft, more emotional than before. It's like uh, one instrument among the others, not just the lead vocalist. You can still hear the good old opera Tarja there occasionally, but still it's very different from what we've heard before. And the other point is of course the use of male vocals, which is much more dominant than on the previous albums. So uh, how do you think about the changes that uh, have taken place using your voice? Well actually I uh, I think that it's very nice and uh, I I was looking forward to this already and uh, I may, may say now that I have something else to think on a stage and in the live performances and giving me uh, privileges a lot to sing with Marco and Marco is a prof really profi musician so i cannot complain at all and he's yeah. uh, very good into what he's doing and uh, now we all are very happy to have him with us and is this the first album that marco joins them because if so that's pretty amazing because i know their dynamic together is amazing and i've definitely always wanted to see the phantom of the opera with her and marco yes <laughs> right so you already mentioned the fact that uh, you have a new bass player and also a new singer with Marco in the band. Um, so how did you hear that uh, you have a new singer in the band? Wasn't that quite a surprise for you? Yeah, of course it was a surprise, but it was a lucky surprise. And uh, I was happy to hear that when uh, Thomas has decided, because I was already in Germany at the time when this uh, movement happened. And uh, yeah, Thomas has made a decision and it was easy, easy to do a word. Yeah, it was. It was a thing that I wanted from the very beginning, even before I started making the first song for this album. Mm. Wow. Okay, um, so that brings me just uh, to the so-called songwriting process. Uh, it would be very interesting to get to know something about that process that has, has taken place before the recording of Century Child. How was it like in comparison to the other albums you did before? The songwriting process itself was just the same as before. But uh, it definitely was the hardest album to make, to compose, to produce, uh, to record everything. But the songwriting process, like uh, first I have the idea, then I make the song itself, after that the arrangement and the lyrics, it remained the same. But the songs were a little bit hard to get out this time, if you might say it so. Very simple question, why? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, the expectations, both from within the band, within myself, and also from the public, were so high that the uh, amount of pressure was also quite high. But there was a lot of 
things going on in my personal life and also in the music business and within the band. It was a very stressful time for all of us. So making the songs was a kind of hard process because of that. Uh, did it have an impact not only on the music but also on the lyrics? Absolutely. I think it's the definitely the darkest album, both musically and lyrically, that we've done so far. So I just wanted to say I'm loving how they're just sitting on the ground. Yeah, that's it's, totally what they want. It is definitely their vibe yeah. and Tuomas's vibe, as we've known and learned about both of them. Definitely. Um, and there was a lot going on, as Tuomas said, in his life at this point, which made it the darkest album. Mm -hmm. um, definitely let us know down in the comments below what was happening in his life in any of the background and that you guys may know that we may be missing because we're still getting to learn about a lot of what happened yeah with original night wish 21 years ago absolutely because we haven't even seen those documentaries yet so like you're saying we know there's some turmoil that was even happening even mm -hmm. though they're looking okay and this is even before once which was the last album so we know more mm -hmm. things had happened so even because we saw an interview when they were doing the Endless Forms Most Beautiful album making and how smooth it actually went. So to hear that this one didn't go as smooth, but they're actually still really happy with the work that came out. That's yeah. also really good to know that you, it doesn't need to go smooth for an amazing album to come out, right? Exactly. And sometimes when it doesn't go as smoothly, you get some really phenomenal moments. Moments. Out of it. Yeah. From the suffering even alone. Yes. Uh, what I consider is quite interesting is that uh, the guitars are more uh, heavy than they, they, they were ever before. What were the reasons for deciding that? Was this just a process that took place when you were in the studio doing the production or was it a conscious decision you did before? It was a <laughs> shitty year and I wanted to make a record <laughs> full of those feelings that I felt. And it just fitted well that the guitars and the basses would be more upfront this time to make it a little bit more heavier than you are used to in a normal Nightwish song. Tari is not liking the person screaming in the background. No, she's easily distracted, I think, like you. Like me, and she's like, who's screaming? What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're distracting me. Right? <laughs> so what was it like for you that uh, you were faced with this wall of guitars when you entered the studio? Well, first time when I when I heard the songs, they were on a demo tape and they sent it to me to Germany and and whoa, I I wasn't in a shock but I was surprised. And then I started to after after each listening of the demo already I started to realize that what's going on and uh, what kind of music I I should interpret now and what kind of feeling I should have on this album. And then when I read the lyrics, so then totally I understood that this is something else now mm -hmm. this is something new for me to do but i think that it was the easiest process for me this time to be on the studio and sing these songs i don't know why maybe maybe inside of me there is a melancholy and uh, it's i prefer to sing more hard songs than love songs yeah. i am not i am even though i'm very happy person <laughs> <laughs> but, but still though i i like to sing very sad songs um that's really cool to hear because on her one of the interviews i heard of her what was tough with nightwish at first was all the instruments that she had to sing over and stuff and she sometimes couldn't hear herself as well when even performing but now with her solo career she has a lot more space to let herself be heard a bit easier yes yeah what I heard is that uh, you are more interpreting the stuff that is brought to you and uh, that you are not taking part in the creative process of the band. So is that the role you understand yourself within the band? Yes, it's a certain kind of role. During these five years, of course, the image of the band and uh, I am uh, putting my face for the band and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's a certain kind of role. I'm not a rock lady myself i'm not anything like that <laughs> so yes you are yeah, yes you are <laughs> but but yeah it's a different life it's a different music but it's part of me very big part of me nowadays. um thomas when did you hear for the first time that tyre decided uh, to go to germany and to leave Finland? and what was it like when you heard that i think what it was like 
already before I started making Sensory Child. And I thought it was actually a great thing because she didn't get what she wanted from Finland and now she got the opportunity to go to Germany and do the thing that she wants. I think it was really cool. And it's for the band it's just the same if you live in Helsinki or yes. Germany. Yes. Just a two hour plane trip and that's no it. No difference. Yeah. yeah. There's absolutely no difference in it. And for example coming here it's much easier that she's already here. We're yeah. saving some plane tickets. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so uh band life is easier nowadays? <laughs> when I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh man, you can see, you can just see the souls of like where the division the was division starting, could have started, did start, or whatever. Like you could just see, there's not slippages, but there's the there's Freudian knowledge. Slip. Is the band easier now? Yeah, there's there's oh. some real knowledge. But it's also seeing like you can also see in Tuamas because we have the background no knowledge that he liked Taria. Yeah, and and had that kind of feeling for her, but um, so seeing how he, he they're like interacting together, um, you can kind of see it. You like, can, too. and like you could totally tell that she what she's saying is she's not really a rocker because she came from classical mm -hmm. music training, and like she's now embodying lyrics for a rock band that she is now as a part of her, but it never was her foundation. Yes, but it's, and just because it's not her foundation, she's growing into it. And if you look at her solo career that she has now, she took so some of that. rocky. <laughs> like, and that's like, Tuomas even said, it, she's like, I'm not a rock girl. He's like, uh -huh, yes, you are. <laughs> and look at 21 years in the future, she and she is a rock girl through and through. Through and through. Um, yeah, okay. So we have to talk about that. Um, there were rumors that, uh, you are leaving the band or that the future is not sure what is going to happen uh, now it's up to you co to command on the whole situation i think you both are here and you can explain everything to your fans Ooh. oh yeah dear fans <laughs> <laughs> no. well the fact is that uh, i made my decision uh, i think one and a half year ago or two years ago to leave to germany or to leave somewhere to continue my studies because i felt unhappy in a situation that I have been living uh, over five years because of the fact that I was already classical singer, not a professional singer, but starting something with the classical music before Nightwish. And then Nightwish came into my life, everything happened very fast. The career of Nightwish has been like this all the time, growing and success. And uh, that is uh, all of a sudden everything happened and I needed to start taking control of my own life my own private life and that's why I left to Germany because there were no chance for me to follow my dream in Finland so yeah the fact is that nowadays I'm living in Germany I'm making my hopefully my diploma in a couple of years if everything goes okay and, uh, and um, yeah after that who knows but we are going to have a break with Nightwish now the year 2003. 2003. Yeah. Um, right. One source where that rumor came from uh, was a band um, that was on tour with you. I'm just talking about that uh, statement that Kimberly did on the Synergy homepage. What did you feel like when you read this statement? Because I think it uh, mm. concerned private talks between you and Kimberly. Before he gets into that, that's really interesting that they're asking about her leaving Nightwish. Yeah, I know. And then we all know like what happened, what happened yeah. in the future. So I can see how some of the division had like you can see the seeds that have been sown of the division from this interview that then took part again this is with us having future knowledge yeah absolutely and that would be such a heartbreaking moment to have um a leak from another band yeah that then has caused rumors like yeah that's wow and y'all this is why i hate rumor spreading i hate when people try to <clears throat> tell people what's happening before it happens because mm -hmm. of the division it causes and the mistrust that it then sows in everything yes. with it and look what it's already doing right and look what it did here so there's always something about like the last actually the last song we listened to was to sit down and listen and stop talking and close your mouth and just go <laughs> go for it and like listen to what is being said so this is very much very prominent to what's happening with them with that another band had posted on their homepage yeah. 
right. about something that they maybe didn't have all the information or knowledge well, about. Well, it was private conversation. It was a private conversation. That's the main thing. <laughs> like, a private conversation, and then you posted the tea on your homepage? Yeah. Excuse me? Come on. Oh, I would be livid. And to think they take a year off in 03, but then they come back with uh, the Once album in 04. Yeah. At least they got another last hurrah. Yeah. In a way, I understand her point because she really wants to be honest with her fans and tell where the band is going and so on. But I really didn't appreciate her going, like, explaining what's happening in our camp. Mm -hmm. Because uh, some things that she wrote there weren't true. Mm -hmm. She said that Nightwish was going to break up, which is absolutely not the case. So it's not her job. Oh my god, I would have been livid. Yeah. Yeah, I... to say that the band is going to break up and, like, look, it's 21 years in the future and Nightwish is still going. So, like, that also removes that other band's credibility. Yeah. And, like, that's just not good on either side. Like, don't talk about what's happening in someone else's camp. Exactly what Tuomas is saying. Jealousy. Yeah, jealousy. Mm. And job to inform where we are going. Um, you already mentioned the fact that uh, the career of Nightwish just grew very stall. Um, um, are you conscious of what you reached at your very young age? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 I'm not, I'm old page. <laughs> no, no, well. No. Whoa! What's just crazy is she's like, I'm old bitch and she's younger now, but I just watched an interview where it's in 2019, she's looking phenomenal. She's like, I'm a girl! So like now that she's older, she's now saying I'm a girl. But, but she's younger. She, she's just, I'm just a girl. So but when she, she was young, she's like now nah, I'm old. She was a bit more. She felt more seasoned, but now yeah. she's like saying I'm just a girl. Like I'm not a woman. I'm a girl still. Yeah. <laughs> like just that enthusiasm. But you can see there's more self discovery for her right now, mm -hmm. and that makes sense. We are very old. We are very young still. I know that, of course, and. And they are, like, for example, now we have Marco with us, which is a, a little bit older guy and uh, having uh, two beautiful sons. And, yeah, he has uh, experience of life, of course, much more more years than us. And it's something that, it's a, like a fairy tale, this whole story of Night Wish. It has been during these five years. Nobody expected anything like this to happen. No success, nothing like that. Even the labels, nobody. So we are living this dream and we are following this and every day is a surprise and every day has to be taken as it is. And uh, on the other hand, success was not always that good for your personal career because it made it more difficult for you in Finland. That's what I heard. Yeah, that is the fact that I couldn't uh, continue my classical so-called career. Yeah, that was hard. Um, another thing we should talk about is uh, your cover version you did uh, on Century Child, The Phantom of the Opera. Very simple question. Why did you choose that piece of music to interpret it? Well, it's a simple answer too, because it's such a good song. And mm. it's also a kind of song which relates to Night, which is really good. You know, it, it might have been just as well made by us. All the chords, vocal lines, everything, just yeah. like Nightwish. So mm -hmm. it was an easy process to take a little rough edge into that song, like we did. Did it also have something to do with the fact that you have that Beauty and the Beast subject in it again? Right. Phantom, Opera, la la la, uh, Beauty, <laughs> Beast, everything. So it was la just la. a perfect la la la. match. That's why. That's why. Um, what stands behind that Beauty and the Beast subject? I never got the point of it, to be honest, and uh, what was the reason for choosing that subject? Because I, I think those two smile. vocabularies, yeah. they also appear in many of the Nightwish songs. First of all, it's the matter of symbolism. Yeah. I like to play with symbols and so on. And Beauty and the Beast, like uh, two different sides of everything. And then there's this Nightwish thing, where there's one Beauty and four Beasts. So it's easy to relate to the truth. I don't know. It's also one of the best movies I ever saw. So. Love Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. It's my favorite. Um, it's very interesting to have <laughs> you both here at the moment uh, because many fans identify Nightwish with your person and you are the creative person behind everything. Um, so it would be very interesting to get to know uh, 
how would you characterize each other? So, what is Tuoma's opinion about Taya? <laughs> <laughs> now tell everything! <laughs> oh, I think Tarja is one of the most charismatic persons I've ever met. You know, every time she enters a room or a stage, she fills the whole area. It's very true. If you know what I mean. So, she really has that inner charisma in her. And uh, for me, she's also like the like the best interpreter of my music and my feelings. And for that, I owe her a lot. The other wow. way around. Wow. How do you top that, Tarja? Well, <laughs> when I when I got to know Thomas, we were quite quite young already. We were something like 12 years old, but I didn't know him so well. And I may say that I know him pretty well now during these these five years we have been together. But the fact that he's uh, always a mystery, he has always inside of him a mystery, and that's that's one of his richness, how can I say that? It's the best thing to have. Not to give all for everybody, to keep yourself as you are. And uh, yeah, I am, uh, he's, uh, he's making me, making me surprised. Every each of the album, for example, Carrier of Nightwish is like, there is no way back. He's always following his dream, and I really appreciate it a lot. He's a very strong person. Yes. Um, we've already been talking about the fact that Marco is uh, new in the band, um, and you mentioned that he's singing for 15 years now, and you were doing that in that style of music for five years. So do you think that you can learn something from him, or are you learning, actually? He's so free, I think. He's unbelievable. He's so free. And that's something to learn. It's the thing. Absolutely, and I, what I just wanted to say, what I think uh, Tarja said very wise about Tuamas is his mystery. Like, mm -hmm. the mystery that he has, which is also why I'm so, like, looking at his eye movements when things are being asked and even things are being said. Like, you could just see he's, like, totally analyzing everything but then he just says us some specific words but you're like i know you got so much more you want to say here but those are really smart choices and marco would make things easy with his free loving free and all that so i mean that was amazing for her to get before she went solo then he does it seems so easy you yes. know just playing the bass smoking yes. a cigarette and singing like hell yes he makes it seem so easy and I don't think he ever got to any school or anything, so he's a self-learned singer. That's really cool. Wow. Okay. There you go, y'all. Wow. So that was an interesting dynamic to to see there in the just with all of their pre-existing knowledge now. Um, everything being said has like a little bit of a different flavor to it if you would have first heard this interview back in 02 compared to now mm -hmm. just with all that going down but it was cool to see even just how how much Tuomas has her back regardless of what she was doing at yeah. least in that moment and even though there was a lot of um discord that was sold in the band with like some people other bands talking their own um, tea and letting people know what's going on uh, from a private talk but like you can see that they still love each other and that they're still learning and they're so young. So like, sure, there was things that happened. We all have things that we wish didn't happen a certain way when we were younger. We learned in retrospect and where they are all now. Um, it's phenomenal to see what trajectory they all took and how um, amazing. Even Marco and Tarja just did a collaboration together. So like even that connection they built with the division that happened they came full around and are now performing again together mm -hmm. and as you know nightwish is still rolling they got a new album coming out even though they're not going to be out performing this live at least they are putting music out still so even when things keep happening with nightwish it seems like it's always something going on they still always put something. something out right and that's like they have such a a strong fan base yeah and to almost you can see how much he's grown even from his very first album to where they're at now and how much 
they've all learned from each other. Yeah. And like Marco has helped, you know, teach them other things. As they said, he's he's older than 15 them. Fifteen years singing more. by the time they got to him. Fifteen years singing yeah. by the time they got to him. He's self taught, so he's they're all able to learn from each other yeah. of specific things and different things. Whereas Taria is operatically taught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marco is self taught. Tuamas is like this mastermind of all the instruments, but then it's the Gar bass singer. <laughs> the Gar bass singer. And um, even in some of the newer interviews we've heard where Tuamas's music had kind of changed pace when he started learning more things about different topics yeah. from Marco and then again With from Troy. Troy yeah, and absolutely. Um, other people yeah. have come into the band. They so evolve. They have Are evolved evolving. and always continue to keep evolving. Yeah, and like just seeing Taria where she's mm -hmm. at now compared to there, I'm that's probably the biggest trans transformation I've evolving. seen out of all of them. Like just seeing where she mm -hmm. was there compared to now. Like she is so happy and in her own she found herself she in found her herself soul. so much in her soul and she was in mm -hmm. spain so like it sounds like she's been living everywhere around the world so that's yeah. good for her and tuamas is always cool to see that young angsty kind of a little anger but to the point type of guy and that's why mm -hmm. i love him and getting to see that red hair with him is always a treat eh love his red hair but we love these interviews please let us know if there's other good interviews or documentaries you want us to check because we love finding out more about anything to do nightwish hope you guys had a good time with us thank you so much john doe for your first youtube membership request hope you had a good time with us we're exiting the rabbit hole now folks thank you so much john doe peace and love everyone god bless y'all take care and bye for now don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more enter the chronicness Special shout out to all of our patrons and YouTube members. We appreciate all of your support.